Welcome to the second half of my visit with Madeleine Marsh and our romp through the history of makeup and consequently the history of women. I really hope that you saw part one of this, which was from the Victorian era to the 1930s. Today's going to be picking it up at the Second World War and taking it through to the 70s. It's I so enjoyed watching part one. I know that sounds silly because I was there, but I've watched it a few times and every time I watch it, I just feel as excited as I did when I was there. So I really hope that has come across. And I know you've all left amazing comments and um, it's gone down really well. So I'm, I'm pleased because I wasn't sure if it was only me that was obsessed with that sort of thing. So it's nice to know that I'm not alone. Um, and yeah, you know, certain things really stood out to me in, in the previous one, um, especially the bit when we're talking about the Victorian era and how it was really frowned upon for women to wear makeup, you know, rouge and lipstick, you know, was considered, you know, you just didn't do it. Um, so consequently, women went really big on their hair, you know, extensions and tons and tons of this like big, big hair. Hair it got bigger and bigger and bigger, the less makeup we were sort of allowed to wear. And I just think you can't keep a good woman down. And I just love the idea that, you know, we're not allowed to wear makeup, so we're going to go super big on the hair. Um, anyway, yeah, I enjoyed all of it. And I really hope that you enjoy this second instalment as much as you did the first. And I certainly enjoyed making it. So I hope you enjoy it. So wow. that's the 30s. Yeah. And your makeup was on this absolutely huge up and up with more and more people wanting it more and more people wearing it mm. nothing could stop it it seemed mm. except a world war suddenly makeup not available i mean it, makeup itself wasn't rationed mm. simply but they didn't have the raw materials didn't didn't have the raw materials and something that absolutely sums it up for me is this and this is a little thing of bourgeois evening in paris mm. rouge which mm. was one of the yeah, one of the great brands yeah. and the most nostalgic brands. But open it up and inside. We regret, owing to wartime restrictions, puffs are unobtainable. <laughs> That's brilliant. Isn't it? And so, makeup, if you could get hold of it, came in emergency packaging. This is the wartime pack. The austerity pack. Yeah, so it was either that or make your own. <laughs> was, the other, was the other was the other wartime option if you could get hold of it? Because mm. in fact, what Cotty was making most of the time was, was that powder. army foot powder. Really? Yeah. So that's that's mm. what they were doing during the war that and anti gas ointment. What Helena Rubenstein was doing during the war and Max Factor was of course that. Yeah. Camouflage makeup. Mm. So makeup had a very important part to 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 play literally in the war effort. Mm. If you're doing camouflage makeup mm. and you know yeah. foot powder, but then also psychologically, it still had an important part because you look at any sort of wartime forties pictures and what you see are girls with bright red lips, yeah. and it, the bright red lipstick became a mark of sort of patriotism and a will to win mm. and lipsticks like all the american lipsticks and any lipsticks were made that were made at the period were all called things like patriot red <laughs> fighting red grenadier red these were all wartime compacts mm -hmm. um, compacts were produced for all the armed services and if you were really lucky and got together with a gi <laughs> you might get something like that now this is made out of plastic because the compacts were oh, with yeah. wartime restrictions. <clears throat> yeah, it's quite light. It is quite light. It's lost its mirror, yeah. unfortunately. A lot of them do plastic, you know, <laughs> very low quality. That's brilliant. But it's very cool, isn't so, it? So yeah, that if that would be a mark of a badge of honour. A badge you of had honour. A, a bit of a date with a GI. That's the pair of stockings, and that's the Canadian Navy. Isn't that lovely? Oh, lovely colours. Really nice. But wow. so, you know, people really wanted makeup and it was important. Mm. Yeah, very, it, it was important. Mm. Hitler hated makeup, actually, mm. and um, the, 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 the sort of lady members of his circle were banned from wearing makeup. It was, yeah, it was seen, it was, putting your makeup on was seen as terribly, terribly important under mm. duress. Yeah. 
Oh, tell us a bit about the 50s, because I'm loving all these compacts here. Right, well, during the war, we'd had all these appalling shortages of ladies that look like men and been doing all this butch stuff, and it's all been uniforms and boiler suits and hard <laughs> times and blackout material. In the 50s, after having gone through all that suffering, we were desperate to luxury and we all wanted to be mm. ladies. Femininity was Femininity, back. yeah. I mean, and this, I mean, this is some of my sort of 50s collection. It was the golden age, of the compacts. 1950s, of, of the compact, the novelty compact. <laughs> now this one, modelled on a pool ball. Oh, wow. Powder in there. This is a sort of classic yeah, design. Yeah, it's sort of famous one. It's Very beautiful. famous one, yeah. It's in the shape of a piano. So powder in there. You can stand it up, or if you want to put it in your handbag. Close the legs. Fold Amazing. it up. I remember my grandmother, she never went anywhere mm. without a compact in her handbag. Yeah. Big, thick lipstick was a very um, typical 50s thing. Again, very feminine, mm. very ladylike. There's the Hollywood lip liner there <laughs> oh my god i think women would probably like that now yes and it does to give <clears throat> you that hollywood look next to that a uh, hazel bishop's real real red um lipstick matches so mm. the idea of that you know you just do your lips with a little match yeah and then this in a way for me is one of the most significant things from the 50s the dates from 1957 and it's by helena rubenstein Oh, it's the first. And this is, the, yeah, the first wand. wand mascara. Wow, so it's the metal one. Yeah. <gasps> wow. Oh, gorgeous, yeah. Yeah, so th I've, I've had this vision of the 50s that you're endlessly checking yourself in minute mirrors yeah, yeah. and, you know, doing your doing your bust and, and whatnot, and it all <laughs> has to be perfect. I see that colour because that looks oh. gorgeous. Wow. Yeah, first time, sort of the oranges and the corals and the... Yes, corals. those incredible, bright... Corals, very popular, all, all bright and strong, and lots of novelty designs, like that's a lipstick thing in the shape of a cocktail shaker. I mean, there's, there's lots. It's novelty, it's fanciful, and it's yeah, endlessly feminine mm. and, and, and ladylike. It's mm. about... Being, it's a about being a lady, and that whole ladylike thing that you, that if you go through fifties magazines, it's all about being perfectly made up at all times. You mm. know, put your lipstick on when your husband comes home. <laughs> uh, what to wear when you're meeting your mother-in-law? Make up for the beach. That's that's the oh fifties coral, and that's the yeah. gala lip line shown there with right. that fabulously elegant yeah. lady. That's a very iconic piece. So you used it to outline or, or do your lips yes. completely. and That's to get that perfect line. Because mm. again, if you look at them, and there's Jane Mansfield down there in those pictures, yeah. perfect. It's all big lips. There's mm -hmm. a real emphasis on the big lips. There's lips and bosoms. Lips and bosoms and That's bright gorgeous. colours. I mean, this is a little 50s compact. Yeah, because the 50s is the first time that women started to wear green and blue on their eyes isn't and it? it's really well this is yeah they're very sort of strong powerful colors and this you've got your mascara there there's your lip gloss and it's this the color of that eye makeup it's cream eye makeup and the and magazines again are terribly prescriptive that you know if you're a blonde you're going to wear blue if you're a redhead you've got to wear green <laughs> yeah. it's incredibly full yeah i'm so intrigued by this pencil this white pencil. Yes, little white pencil. Because I didn't really know they use white pencils. Yes, I, 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 I'm... Now I need to find that's, out. That's the only one I've seen with a white, with a white pencil. I guess they used it on the waterline. But I've, I've never seen, I've never yeah. heard of that before. White pencil well, was used for nails, nails yeah. so it could be for nails. Possibly nails, yeah, that makes sense. But that it's, pink so isn't bright, it? I love it. The buzzword in 50s ads is ladylike. Right, everything and, is amazing. And if you yeah. think of 50s fashion, yeah. you know, think of the madman look, you've mm. got the breasts going out, mm. the waist going mm. in, the sticky out skirt. It's back to Victorian style corseting again. Mm. You know, women hadn't worn so much underwear since the Edwardian period. Mm. This year. Back into that. Yeah, back into fashion, courtesy of Monsieur Dior. Yeah. All about being a lady. But it's because they wanted to that this time yeah. around. They wanted because to. Because they wanted yeah. to. They, they chose to. And we've been blokes to. But you say they wanted to, but also in a way we had to. Because during the war, 
you know, we'd been doing men's jobs and you know, we'd had to be blokes. Mm. After the war, the men come back, mm. so we have to sort of, you know, go out, you know, leave the workplace and go back into the kitchen mm. with all our lovely new American appliances. And the other thing women had to do was produce loads of babies yeah. because loads, you know, many people have been killed. Mm. We were about to enter this huge boom of sort of manufacture and production. Mm. We needed a baby boom. Yeah. So, feminine clothes, mm. loads of makeup. Yeah, and the classic sort of slim waist, wide hips. Yeah. And Childbearing. <laughs> and if you think of the icons of the decade, yeah. Jane Mansfield. Yes, yeah. Marilyn Monroe. Mm. It is, it's all about Fertility, femininity. Yeah. We'd had the hard lines of austerity and the war, which had been all masculine. Mm. Now it's sort of full on, it's breast, boobs and babies and lashings of makeup. So moving on here, because this looks like a huge change, which is what I'm presuming is the 60s. Yes, this is 60s I mean, and the difference 70s. is almost, you cannot believe that it's 10 years between, one decade between this shelf and this shelf. Right, well let me just show you something. This was your makeup box wow. from 1970. It's Mary Quant's. Wow. Cosmetic crayons. <gasps> oh my God, how things changed. And the instructions suggest that you can draw a flower anywhere on your body. So you can just put those absolutely, absolutely wow. anywhere. And it's such a change. Because it's just like pastel. Yeah, pastel yeah it is. Yeah, they're colour, they, they are yeah. colouring pastels. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love them. But they're, I mean, they're great. And look at that packaging. Yeah, I mean, it, it's amazing compared yeah, to... Yeah, look at the difference. But you know, <laughs> some like of these were still away. going on at the same yeah, time. Yeah, but it was on more one... your mother would have yes, these. Yes, or your, your granny. granny. Granny's guilt. Yeah. funky tin <laughs> for the young people yeah and but that again is so significant because i said yeah in the 50s we'd had to be ladies mm. to produce the baby boom mm. now, now the babies the are babies here. have come up they yeah. are the most numerous mm. for the first time you've got full teenage employment because it was a, a boom time mm. it was a boom time of manufacturing so mm. you could leave school whatever 15 and you could walk straight into a job if you didn't like that job, you'd walk straight into another job. Mm. For the first time, kids had money in their pocket. Mm. And for the first time, you know, we didn't, it wasn't that mm. kids wanted to look like their mothers. Yeah, they, and they wanted to have more fun. Yeah. And their mothers yeah. wanted to look like them. Teenagers yeah. became, worship. yeah, be, exactly, mm. became the look. The look. Mm. So the other classic thing of, um, of 60s makeup is the four eyelashes, mm. and I've got some great Twiggy four eyelashes, right. and sure, yeah, yeah, Twiggy was the icon. Mm. Sixteen bust measurement, I think, of thirty and a half inches, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. But that's the new icon. Yeah. All eyes, she legs, like a little fourteen-year-old girl, big yeah. bandy eyes. Which is what she was. Yeah. And that was the icon. That's what people were aspiring mm. to. So there was this total sea change in cosmetics. It was a revolution. It was about looking young. Ah, now we're moving on to 70s glam there. That's Bieber. Bieber. And Edna, that classic Bieber colour. Silver. Oh, wow. And this, again, we've seen the Mary Quant, which looked like, like um, wax crayons. Mm. This is the Bieber paint box. For your <gasps> the eyes. famous Bieber paint box. The famous Bieber paint box. I've actually only ever box. seen this in pictures. I haven't ever put my hands on one. But look wow. at that colour range. Look, the Bieber so colours. 70s. Yeah, well, Could it's the colour of bruised fruit. Mm. People did look like they'd been punched in the eye. <laughs> yeah. But it because it was all those the same colour as the clothes. It was russet, yeah. maroon, brown. Yeah, which hadn't been seen ever before. Yeah. I mean, now we have a mix mash of fashions coming round, coming round, coming round. But then this was brand new. The yeah. colours were brand new. That's you know that's the seventies. So it's about glam, and you get men for the first time. Think of Mark Bolan, yeah. David Bowie, embracing and makeup. yeah, Tim Curry as Rocky Horror. Mm -hmm. Men embracing you know makeup and long hair. The whole hippie movement. Is it a boy? Is it a girl? Mm. Who's got the longest hair? That everyone's <laughs> wearing caftan and beads. Yeah. So that this is a sea change. It's a world yeah. where you know women can dress as men in their jeans. It's unisex mm. fashions. Mm -hmm. It's teenage revolution, yeah. and we haven't looked back since.
It is history in your hand. Mm. That's what it is. It is. And on your face. And on your legs. Yes. <laughs> and wherever you choose arms. to put it. Yes. yes, on your arms. Oh, well, thanks so much. My pleasure. Thank you for coming. <laughs>